together, hearing God's word together. Oh, that's enough to give God all the praise. Amen. Second uh, Corinthians chapter number one, verse number three. Second Corinthians one and three. Wednesday night, also, I'm going to be teaching uh, Psalm 100, the entire chapter. I'm going to be teaching it. Uh, but I tell you, it will bless you. I promise you that. It will minister to you and strengthen you. And uh, I love preaching, don't get me wrong, but I love to teach as well. And uh, some of my favorite memories as a pastor have been teaching. And I mean that. And uh, praise the Lord. I'm not going to do like, <laughs> like we did on Baker, though, where I'm just going to get like, all right, we're going through John, and it's going to take eight months. <laughs> we made it through, John, but uh, praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. But uh, I tell you, whenever we went through the book of Revelation, that took us six months, I think. And uh, But praise the Lord. Amen. We were watching a lot of end-time events unfold at that time, too, which was really neat. And uh, we're still watching end-time events uh, unfold right before our eyes. Uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 1, verse number 3. Blessed be, blessed be God, listen to this, even the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, amen, the Father of mercies and the God of all comfort. How many of you know he is a God of comfort? Oh, yeah. Amen. Whatever you go through, he's here to comfort you. Amen. With the help of the Holy Spirit, I want to preach upon the thought of you act just like your father. Amen. You act just like your Father. Help me pray. Father, in Jesus' name, we ask you that you would have your way. Give us ears to hear, hearts to receive. Help us to apply this word in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. You act just like your Father. Have any of you men ever been told that you act just like your dad? I have. And Robert, you ever heard that? You act just like your father? No, <laughs> he acts just like his mother. <laughs> but uh, I am always being accused of being just like my dad, Jim Glasgow. A while back, uh, Sister Brandon and I went over to my mom and dad's house, and we were there for a few hours. And I was laughing, cutting up, having a good time with my family. And Miranda looked at me finally after three hours. She said, babe, we really probably need to get going. You know, it's, it's getting kind of late. And I said, baby, what's the hurry? And she said, all I know is that if we were over at my mom's house, you would have been ready to go three hours ago. Amen. <laughs> Miranda said, whenever we're at my family's house, uh, you act grouchy, awkward, and you're not talkative at all. <laughs> and uh, suddenly my mom spoke up. <clears throat> Miranda, he's just like his father. <laughs> and then my dad got in the conversation. Dad said, well, if your family wasn't as boring as it is, uh, I would want to get involved in the conversation. <laughs> And I jumped in too. You know, my dad started it, and I said, Yeah, Miranda, if your family actually liked me, maybe I'd like going over there. Hallelujah. Thank Needless you. to say, <laughs> <laughs> Needless to say, me and dad were both in the doghouse. In the very true. <laughs> Oh, you love the Lord tonight. Amen. Oh, God is so good. You see, me and my dad, we have a lot of similarities. We're both pastors. We're both quiet, believe it or not, until we, we get to know you. you know, I mean, I'm kind of quiet at first. I may put on this facade of I'm just this outgoing, not shy guy. But if I'm around people I don't know, sometimes I can be kind of shy until I get to know you. Uh, me and my dad, we're both on the shorter end of the height. Um, <laughs> we both like to eat. <laughs> As Brother Rick mentioned, me and my dad are both a little husky, you could say. And uh, we're both losing our hair 
in the same exact spot. Right here in, in the back. I got a little yarmulke going on back there. But there's no denying who my dad is because I act just like him. That's a good thing in right. my case. I love my dad. He's a good, good man. But brothers and sisters, not only do I want to imitate my earthly dad, but I want to imitate my heavenly daddy, you could say. I want to imitate my heavenly father. Can you say amen? amen. Wouldn't it be awesome if strangers could just come on up to us, maybe at the grocery store or on the job, maybe a new, new employee, and as soon as they get around us, they're just like, hmm, you look familiar. You look a lot like my heavenly father. Amen. You talk like him. You sound like him. You act like him. All the people would be able to see the heavenly father displayed in our hearts and lives. That is my desire. Whenever people look at my life, I don't want them to see William. I don't want them to even see Jim Glasgow or anybody else. I want them to see my father being displayed in my life. Amen. Number one tonight, I want to tell you that my father is merciful. Amen. My heavenly father is merciful and I want to be just like my father. Second Corinthians 1, 3, blessed be God, even the father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the father of mercies. Oh, he's the father of mercies. Uh, many Jewish individuals actually refer to God as the father of mercies. And I like that. It's a beautiful name for, for the heavenly father, the father of mercies. Uh, it's a perfect description of who God is. He is Merciful. What is mercy? Well, mercy is when you and I don't receive the judgment of God that you and I deserve. None of us deserve God's forgiveness. None of us deserve God's goodness. We sure don't uh, uh, deserve uh, eternal life, uh, but yet God demonstrated his love and mercy to us by going to Calvary's cross and making a way for you and I to have access unto the Father. Whenever I think of God's mercy, I'm reminded of the woman who was caught in the very act of adultery. And according to the law of Moses, she was to be taken and stoned to death for her sin. But before those men, as they went, they got her, before they were to stone her, they brought her to Jesus and they asked Jesus, Jesus, what do you think we should do to this woman? And Jesus, he didn't answer them a word. How many you know sometimes it's good just to not even answer a stupid question? Hello, somebody. Sometimes good just to keep our, our mouths shut. Jesus simply stooped down to the ground and he began to write in the dirt. Suddenly, those men saw what Jesus was writing and they began to get nervous. Now, if, you, if you're interested in it, some Bible commentators say, that when Jesus was writing in the ground, it was possible he was writing those accusers' sins. I think that's a good possibility. And others say that Jesus was writing down specific dates and times in which those people that were going to be casting stones had committed adultery and other sins of their self. I believe that's a very good possibility. Oh, but you see, as Jesus was writing in the ground, suddenly Jesus looked up at those men and he said, he that is without sin cast the first stone. Suddenly all those people drop their stones one by one and they begin to walk away. All that is left at the scene now is Jesus and a woman that has nothing on but hopefully a little sheet around her chest and waist. And here's the Son of God with this adulterous woman. Remember, they caught her in the very act and just dragged her out of that house. And Jesus looked at this lady right in the eyes. He said, ma'am, where are your accusers? And right at that moment, she placed her faith in Jesus. And she said, Lord, there are no accusers. Jesus looked at her and said, neither do I condemn thee. Go and 
sin no more. Yes, that woman deserved judgment. Yes, that woman deserved to be put to death according to the Old Testament law of Moses. But Jesus was the perfect representation of the Heavenly Father and he displayed the mercy of God. Aren't you thankful for the Father's mercy? You deserve to be in prison, some of you. You deserve to be in a graveyard, all of us. But yet the Heavenly Father's mercy was extended to us whenever God sent forth His Son Jesus to pay the ultimate price for our sin. He is the Heavenly Father of mercy. And because He's merciful, that's the way I want to be. Jesus said in Matthew 5 and 7, Blessed, blessed are the merciful. You look up that word blessed in your Strong's Concordance, it'll say happy. You want to be happy? Then you need to be merciful. Not bitter and unforgiving, but be merciful. Blessed, happy are the merciful, for they shall obtain mercy. God never called you and I to become bitter and unforgiving. But we're to be just like our Father. Yeah. A people of mercy, can you say? Amen. Amen. Number two tonight, I want to tell you that my Heavenly Father, He's a blesser. Yeah. Amen. Oh, Is that how you spell blesser? Because I heard the shepherd was spelled wrong on the TV this morning. That was Sister Miranda's doing. Amen. My father is a blesser. How many of you know he is a blesser? Amen. How many of you blessed by God tonight? Amen. James 1.17. Every good gift. Say every good gift. Every single one of them. Every good gift and perfect gift is from above comes down from the Father of lights, with whom is no variableness, neither the shadow of turning. Amen. Every good thing that you and I have is a result of our Father's goodness. The eternal life that I have, the forgiveness of sins that I've received, my beautiful wife, my precious children, the house I live in, the church I attend, the friends I have, the family that I have, all of those things are only a result of my heavenly Father. Father's goodness. He is a blesser. Amen. Every good gift comes down from the Heavenly Father. Whenever your lights turn on, it's a gift from your Father. Amen. Haven't you ever had a time whenever you tried to turn the lights on, but the lights didn't come on? I've been there before. Amen. Right after Sister Rand and I met, see, she kind of taught me how to be wise with money. And uh, we've got a lot of moving around, so let's kind of keep that at bay too, okay? Uh, whenever Miranda and I met, she she come out here to California. She come over to the house, and, and I was at work, and, and she said, William, the lights won't come on. I was like, well, that's weird. I sent them like 10 bucks last month, you know, pg <laughs> She's taking all my money. <laughs> but anyway, so I uh, I called PG&E and, and they said, oh yeah, your lights got turned off because you ain't been paying your bill right. I said, what do you mean? I just paid my bill. And they said, yeah, you paid your bill. You paid like $200, but you owed like five or six hundred dollars <laughs> and that's why we shut your lights off so brothers and sisters every time I turn the lights now and they come on I know it's a gift from God <laughs> Amen. oh yeah when the lights turn on thank your heavenly father when your car starts Thank your heavenly Father. Oh, when there's food in the cupboard, uh, groceries in the fridge, you need to thank your heavenly Father because all those good gifts come from Him. Amen. Oh, you see, I, I mentioned this morning, last week, uh, somebody come and, or, or somebody from Modesto gave the church $500, gave me and Miranda $500. That was a gift from our heavenly Father. And then I told you, this morning that uh, all that piano, Kayla had ruined it, hurricane him by spilling water on it. But sure enough, Brother Jay gets here at church tonight, starts taking the thing apart, gets a blow dryer, and uh... 
Praise the Lord. It's working. Amen. That's a good $500 gift from Jay and my Heavenly Father. Amen. Oh, can we lift up our hands tonight? I'm talking about our Heavenly Father. Anybody else know the blessings of the Lord like I know? Hallelujah. Frank this afternoon goes, makes himself $100. Praise the Lord. And whenever I saw the temperature, I thought, thank God I'm not doing it. Amen. Oh, but it's a gift from God. Every good gift and perfect gift comes down from our Heavenly Father because He is a blesser. Can you say amen? He's a blesser. A couple weeks ago, me and Miranda come to church and uh, Jay told me that he wanted to testify before service. And I thought, oh man, cool. Maybe we'll start out with, look what the Lord had. But it wasn't that. <laughs> Oh, sure enough, Brother Jay, and, uh, or not Jay, but Marlene and uh, Seth, maybe, they come and they bring in this big old box praise the Lord. down this aisle. I'm like, what in the world is in there? Uh, yeah, wrapped right <laughs> through the donut thing. I'm like, somebody went to Krispy Kreme, praise the Lord. <laughs> oh, sure enough, they bring that up. I opened up that thing, and then I saw a case, and I thought, oh, my, this is, a, it was like Christmas. <laughs> I looked in that thing, and there it is. It's an American-made Telecaster. I've always wanted one of those. Miranda gets her some cowgirl boots. Amen. You know what it was? It was a result of the goodness of your heart but most of all the results of the goodness of my heavenly father can you just lift up your hands once again and say father I thank you for blessing me Hallelujah. help me out I need you to help me because I don't have the words up in front of me as the world looks upon me as I travel along they say I have nothing, oh, but they are so wrong. In my heart I'm rejoicing because I'm set free. <laughs> Thank you, Lord, for your blessings on me. There's a roof up above me, shoes on my feet, food on the table. And a good place to sleep. We're getting this all backwards. But God knows. And you know it too. Amen. Oh, brothers and sisters. He is a blesser. Don't forget to count your blessings. Because if we quit counting our blessings, we start walking around becoming ungrateful and unthankful. Amen. So true. But it didn't go my way. I'm mad about this situation. And all we do is just focus on the negative and we neglect to see the blessings of the Lord. Open up your eyes tonight and look at the goodness of the Lord. Our Heavenly Father is a blesser. Amen. Last thing tonight is that, oh, look at this. I got blessed with this tonight. Amen. Little angel right here. Look at this, man. Now wake up, girl. <laughs> I got blessed with this beautiful Little angel, amen. She said, but don't touch right here because it's still wet. <laughs> amen. Oh, I'm blessed, amen. I was blessed whenever I, I got a little note from, a, I forget which child it was. I get a lot of them from the kids. You know, these teachers do little crafts with them downstairs. And I always end up with like five or six notes. I love you, pastor, amen. Pastor, I love you. Pastor, you're my friend. You're a good pastor. Pastor, you're fat, but I love you. you know? <laughs> uh, that came from Arkita. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> I did hear Arkita was listening to me sing, though. <laughs> you, do you act just like your father? Do you act just like him? Think about it. I'm talking about our, our Heavenly Father. Do you act like Him? If not, then we need to. Amen? Amen. Amen. Number three, I want to tell you that I look like my Father. Yeah. I look like my Father. A few weeks back, I was at a funeral and Sister Teresa Ford 
I went to Brother Mark's wife that will be here in a couple weeks. She walked up to me with a big old smile on her face. She said, oh, William, you look just like your dad. It's just crazy how much you guys look alike. Whenever I look in the mirror, I don't necessarily just notice it. I know we act a lot alike, but uh, I just, you know, I don't really notice it. But she really noticed it. And uh, she said, you look so much like your dad. She said, you laugh like your dad? You carry yourself like your dad? You preach like your dad? And she said, there's no denying that Jim Glasgow is your father. And uh, all she had to do was look at me and the way I conducted myself to know who I belong to. Amen. Brothers and sisters, just as my earthly father's traits and characteristics are seen in my life, my desire is that my heavenly father's characteristics and traits would be seen in this earthly life. Amen. Us who are saved have been adopted by our heavenly father. But for those who are lost, they act just like their father. Have you ever wondered how some people can do what they do? How can somebody steal like they do? How can someone lie like they do? How can someone hate like they do? How can someone criticize, gossip, slander, bad body like they do? Have you ever wondered those questions? How do people do that? Here's the answer. They're just like their father. They're just like their father. What do you mean? That's not what the heavenly father's like. Unless you've been born again, you're not a part of this family of God. Hello, somebody. Amen. You know why we go around calling each other brother? A lot of people don't really do that anymore. I still do. I was raised that way. But I'll call Ray Brother Ray. Why? He's my brother in Christ. We, we don't have the same earthly father. Ray's old enough to be my daddy. Praise the Lord. <laughs> yeah, we're just brother. <laughs> Rick's old enough to be my great grandpa. <laughs> Ray's my brother. Rick's my brother. Amen. Robert, he's my brother. Amen. Because we've all got the same heavenly father. Amen. 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 Anyone not born of God is inherently a child of the devil. Listen to what Jesus said. While he was speaking to an unbelieving crowd who denied that Jesus was the son of God. Listen to what Jesus told them in John 8, 44. You are of your father, who? The devil. You're of your father, the devil, and the lust of your father you will do. He was a murderer from the beginning, and he abode not in the truth, because there's no truth in him. When he speaks a lie, he speaks of his own. He is a liar and the father of it. Jesus told us why some people do what they do. Because they're children of darkness rather than children of light. But there's hope for those that are children of darkness. Amen. All they've got to do is call upon Amen. the name Amen. of the Lord. Amen. And God will transfer them from the kingdom of darkness to the kingdom of light. You can go from being a child of hell to a child of the most high God. How many of you glad you've been adopted by the heavenly father? Oh, let's lift our hands. Thank the Lord to the musicians. Come. Let's all, let's all stand. Let's all stand and lift up our hands. Lord, we praise you. We praise you, Lamb of God. Thank you, Lord, for taking us in. For taking me in, Lord. I wasn't deserving. I wasn't worthy, but you willingly, you took me in.
Thank you. Thank you, Lord Jesus.
tuko na la basa yanda korama to lobo sikede bashondo klaba sikede ba for the lord says unto you tonight my children i am your father of mercy do you need help tonight do you need forgiveness tonight do you need hope tonight then run to me my child i'm your father of mercy i sent my son to pave the way for your forgiveness of sin run to me run to me run to me says the lord your father of mercy hallelujah oh church let's lift up our hands tonight oh thank you jesus thank you jesus thank you jesus thank you jesus hallelujah 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 Maybe you're here tonight and you say, Pastor, I really need the Lord tonight. I've been wondering if God still loves me or not. If God can forgive me, if God can help me. He's come here tonight to tell you he's the Father of mercy. Just run to him. I'm forgiven. for you. Maybe you want to get saved. You need to get saved. You need to rededicate your heart and life to the Lord. Why don't you come? I ain't worried about what time it is. It's God o'clock. <laughs>
Oh, yeah. 